Welcome to the Full Nielsen. I'm going to be giving you guys a quick review of the Glock Performance Series triggers. I do not have those triggers here in these firearms because they're on their way back. I sent them back for a refund. In my opinion, very heavy, very mushy, uh, not a very distinct wall, very easy to just break through the wall in terms of taking up the pre-travel on your gun. Um, for the price that they're charging, I thought they were worse than my stock Glock triggers with just a three and a half pound connector that was like 12 bucks. I thought that those triggers were worse in terms of the trigger pull, the predictability, everything than these triggers are, even from a competition perspective. I thought that they were worse in terms of how heavy they are. With my Smith & Wesson competitor, which I have here, and I did a review on this, and it's got some issues of its own, but what you'll notice with the Canic, the Walther PDP, and the Smith & Wesson Competitor, or any of the 2.0 triggers, is the pre-travel is very light. Which makes it to where when you need to shoot fast and you don't want to jerk the trigger around, you pull, and you're only shooting to reset, okay? What that means is you're going to break the trigger, gun's going to cycle, you're only moving the trigger back that much, and that's all the more movement that trigger's getting. You're not letting the trigger come all the way out here you're just going to reset okay stock Glock triggers you do the same thing pull to the wall gun goes off let it go to reset and you're just riding that reset okay when you want to shoot fast that's how you shoot any of those types of triggers the performance series triggers from Glock are very difficult to shoot to reset they have a lot of pre-travel the pre-travel is very heavy and mushy instead of being light like the Smith & Wesson or light like the uh, Canx or Walther PDPs or any of those that do it better than Glock does. Very mushy, heavy pre-travel, and then instead of hitting a wall that's pretty distinct, and Glocks aren't known for having a very distinct wall, but this trigger right here, you can see where it kind of hits a stopping point. And then I pull through it, Glock 34, same thing. Okay. Um... It eliminates what little wall basically exists in a Glock, and you just have a really long, mushy trigger with a not very distinct wall. Horrible trigger, in my opinion. To think that this is like the aftermarket performance trigger, we're not going to include this in any Glocks from the factory. You're going to have to buy this as an add-on. Walther PDP is less money than what most Glock Gen 5s are. Canic. Uh, rival series or less money and performance wise what you're getting nowadays the market just keeps changing and improving and Glock is just doing nothing when it comes to I, I, I'm not one of the people that has an issue with the grips on uh, you know the way the Glock feels in hand you know the ergonomics oh it doesn't feel as refined as this or that those things don't bother me so much the things that bother me are the things that actually lend themselves to being able to shoot the firearm well and I don't find that the grip is a hindrance on a Glock for me shooting them well. The reliability of Glocks I enjoy, the accessories that are out there for Glocks, how inexpensive magazines are and readily available they are, and all the options you can get, you know, up to 33 round capacity magazines for Glocks. All those things are awesome selling points for Glocks. The thing that really holds this platform back for me is... The trigger action on these guns is inferior to lots of their competitors. I think the M&P 2.0 is better. Um, I think the I know that the Canic and the Walther PDP have far superior triggers to what comes on a Glock. So Glock's going to sell you a gun that's going to cost you fifty to hundred dollars more than a Canic or a Smith and Wesson, or than a Walther PDP, and then they're going to charge you another hundred dollars for a trigger that is still worse way worse. And if you don't believe me, go try one out side by side with a Canic or something like that. Way worse than any of those other triggers. The way I would describe the Glock performance trigger is if a team of lawyers got together and said, we are going to make a race-ready trigger for the Glock platform. That's what that trigger represents to me, meaning mushy, heavy, just terrible feel to the trigger. So, I don't recommend them. I sent mine back. They're not worth the money. If you want a good trigger in your Glock at this point in time, don't buy a Glock. Go buy something that has a good trigger. Because Glock 
and apparently Timney and a lot of the other companies that are trying to produce triggers for the Glock have not been able to solve the puzzle and produce a trigger that has a great feel and is reliable and checks all the boxes yet. Any company that can do that is going to have, uh, they're going to make a fortune. I think Trigger Tech is producing a trigger. Maybe I'll get a hold of one of those and try that out in the future and see if it's any good. But so far, not good results with any of the aftermarket triggers for Glock. It is not worth destroying the reliability in a gun that's going to be used for carry or competition for all those guys out there that were quick to jump to Timney's defense and say, well, it's a competition trigger. It doesn't matter if it's reliable. Well, it doesn't matter if you want to lose the competition. If you want to win the competition, you still need it to be reliable. So anyway, um, I don't recommend the Glock Performance Series triggers. I've been surprised that some of the bigger YouTubers out there that have actually had trigger time on them and gotten their hands on them have had almost nothing to say about them. And I think it's because they're reluctant to destroy their reputations with companies like Glock where they're getting free stuff for review all the time. But at the same time, they don't want to completely destroy any credibility that they may have with their YouTube audience. And they know that the products are horrendous. So anyway, that concludes my review of the Glock Performance Series triggers. I don't recommend them. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.